Okay, you're good to go. So my name is Deanna Wilkinson, Special Ed Coordinator right now. I'm in um, Kindergarten Special Education Class 3. Um, I'm going to be talking about
or in a self-contained, a resource or a low incidence class setting. Right? Transportation, testing accommodations, and extended school year. In addition to the prior written notice, if applicable, if your student does not have speech services, do you need to mention speech services in the prior written notice? If they do not have speech services, do you, you don't need to mention anything, right? Ms. Dora, here. Oh, you answered that one. They need to go back to school for catching. If they don't have related services, you don't need to mention it, okay? The prior written notice is a summary of the IEP. Supplemental aids and services, only if they have it. Who can give an example of the supplementary aids and services? Come on, guys, I've got a Milky Way. Like <laughs> FM. Assistive technology, FM, those are supplementary aids and services. Who would help with the service? I don't remember. Who would help with the service? It depends on what the aid is. An audiologist. Who said that? An audiologist. So if um, um, we need an audiologist to check on the FM system, then we can put them under supplemental, aid, supplemental aids and services. Um, behavior. If we need the behavior technical uh, specialist, to come and work with the students, then we can add them to the supplementary aids and services only if the student has had two revisions to the BIP, okay, two revisions, and your coordinator has requested that individual to come in. Um, also, our autism specialist. Alternative assessment. If students are ID and taking the alternative assessment, that needs to be in the prior written notice. This one I've been looking at a lot. Consideration of best practices, strategies for students with autism. Every single student that is diagnosed with autism from our district has to have the 11 considerations. That's under ad hoc. I believe it's LCPS 001. I have to check the number. But every student requires that. That discussion is part of their IEP. Okay? Functional behavior assessment, if we need it and the BIP. And when you add a BIP, if it's a revision, write how many revisions it is. Because remember, we cannot request additional assistance from our behavior technical specialist unless we have how many revisions to the BIP? Two. Two, okay? If we go to hearing or something and there's a student that has been suspended and has had manifest after manifest after manifest, if we never see that there's been a revision to the BIP, who's in the wrong? We're in the wrong. We know there's behavior, so we know we need to continue work with the behaviors. Um, satellite site or their non-home school. Okay. Proposals made by parents and the reasons for the acceptance or rejection and transition. How many of you are in middle school or high school? Okay. All of middle school and high school should have the transition in there. What's the age when you have to start having the transition? 16. 14. 14. 14. So we're not going to do a lot of samples. Um, I wish we had time to do more, um, but we, you know, I can send you this information. So a sample of the eligibility. The IEP team proposes that Johnny continues to qualify as a student with a specific learning disability, SLD, in the area of math as his primary eligibility. What keywords stick out to you in there? Okay, that they continue, so we know it's not an initial. They're continuing with their eligibility. What else sticks out? <coughs> Math only. Math only, okay. Primary eligibility. We have a lot of students that have secondary or tertiary eligibilities. We want to be clear, this is their primary eligibility, okay? Does their secondary need to be listed or yes. it does? Yes. So you can do that one of two ways. Some people put it right under this one and um, speech and language, um, speech and language impairment under a language category. 
as his secondary eligibility. Um, many people, though, will actually put it in a separate proposal. Okay, primary, secondary, tertiary. Um, the reason, the IEP team agrees the current multidisciplinary evaluation report dated 5-21-2015 indicates Johnny meets eligibility criteria of SLD in the area of math and requires special education services in order to address deficits as outlined in the evaluation. What sticks out in there for you? Referring to the evaluation. <laughs> yes, it's specific to the evaluation and the dates. We know it's not an evaluation from five years ago. Okay, we know that that is the current evaluations. Um, and that they require um, special education services to address the deficits, okay? Because they, they have de deficits. We have several students in the district, a lot of students in the district that are diagnosed with a disability but do not receive special ed services because there is no educational impact, okay? Parent proposes so-and-so have an educational assistant with her all day, we see. Okay. With this one, parents have their own language. Notice that we didn't put parent proposes, Sarah, have an educational, have a one-to-one -one educational assistant with her all day. Typically, a parent is not going to ask for a one-to-one. -one. That is our language. Okay. We want to capture what the parent really wants. And if you need to ask questions, you can ask clarifying questions. So do you want someone with her all day? When specifically do you feel you need that someone needs to be with her? Is it during transitions? Is it during unstructured time like recess or in the cafeteria? Okay, so try and get specific. It's okay to reject it as long as we have data to support rejecting it. The district rejects a one-to-one -one assistant for Sally throughout the school day. The IEP team requires additional data in order to consider a one-to-one -one assistant. At this time, the current data does not warrant a one-to-one -one assistant. What sticks out for you in this statement? And think about all of these that you've done at your campus and how they've been worded in the IEP in the prior written notice. The additional data. Okay. And they're using data to, to make that uh, rejection or that reason. For exactly. Rejection. So what if I wrote, the committee does not feel that Sally requires a one-to-one. -one. It's not about feelings, it's about the data. Correct. Correct. Did we totally say, no, we're never even going to consider it again? No, at this Correct. time. At this time. Okay. So what we can do to show the parent that you are working with them is we can do a counter-proposal. So the district proposes to collect additional data to identify Sally's specific areas of need, possibly requiring additional adult support. Okay, we can accept that. The team agrees that additional data is needed to discern Sally's specific needs, possibly requiring additional adult support. The team recommends meeting to discuss the additional data no later, and we are showing parents that we are held accountable. So we are going to meet prior to that date. If you can solidify a date at that meeting, solidify a date. It is very hard, as you guys know, to get everybody on the same page, at the same place, at the same time. Okay? Have someone at that meeting send out a calendar invite before you meet. If you know that you're going to have a parent that will be requesting a one-to-one, -one, invite your coordinator, and we will be there. Okay? Some important notes. The reason to accept and reject should not be a copy of the proposal. We are, um, the IP team committee proposes that Sally receive 30 minutes of speech therapy weekly. We're accepting because Sally needs speech therapy. Is that a reason? Use your data, be specific. It should be a statement as to why the proposal was accepted or rejected, supported by the data. And it should be specific data, not based on feelings. So the prior written notice should not identify specific personnel. And I know we get into these meetings and things get heated and um, parents are saying, I want 
I want um, Mr. Smith in with my daughter all day long. Okay. How would you address that in an IEP? Do we discuss personnel in an IEP? Mm -hmm. What are some things that, that we could say? Would you like, say inclusion teacher, like specify general education teacher? You don't need, you need to specify a teacher like that. Your child will receive the supports outlined in this IEP, but this is a personnel matter, and that is not part of the IEP discussion. Okay. Who can make proposals? I should have hit that one. Who can make proposals? <laughs> IEP team. Who does that entail? Case manager, classroom teacher, parent, student after a certain age. So basically everybody at the, in the meeting, right? So the IEP team, who else can make a proposal? The parent. And if the parent disagrees, who makes a proposal? If the parent disagrees, the district makes the proposal, okay? The school and the district are one. We are all together. We are all on the same team. Okay, so those are the three that can make proposals. data to support the proposal. I would also note that the parent disagrees in other relevant factors below. Or you can put it in, um, in, in the reason, just be sure that you're very specific as to why. How many of you have had those parents? Huh? Right? Tabling IEPs on the prior written notice. If at all, please do not table IEPs. If at all possible. Okay? But we all have those situations. If you have to table an IEP, both the IEP and the prior written notice must be finalized prior to the ending of the meeting. Okay? They have to be finalized. So if we can, let's get it done. All proposals and considerations must be noted in the prior written notice with accept or reject. And I'll go over as to how we're going to do it because it gets a little tricky. The parent must receive a copy of both the IEP and the prior written notice prior to leaving the meeting. Sometimes these tabled IEPs are the ones that get us in trouble. Okay? So what happens with tabling IEPs in the prior written notice. The very last proposal should include points needing to be addressed in the next IEP, as well as a mutually convenient time for the committee to come back together. Okay, so please have someone send a, a calendar invite and put it in the prior written notice when everyone is reconvening. When reconvening, the very first proposal should state, this is an IEP reconvened from the table IEP data, da, da, da. So what happens if we agree with everything up until the services page? So what we do in the meeting is we are in the prior written notice and we've accepted and agreed on, on um, everything up until the services page. So the eligibility, once we get to that service page, student goes back into what's called stay put. Everything from the previous IEP needs to be re-entered 
to match the previous IEP from the service page on. Does that make sense? So if we're tabling the IEP because we cannot agree if the student should go to a satellite program or stay at the home school, we've done the goals, we've done, we know they need speech, we know they need OT, we know they need mental health, all of that has been agreed upon, but the placement, the least restrictive environment has not been agreed upon, then every, it stay put. Everything from the previous IEP, you have to re-enter and make sure it matches. Does that make sense? No. Tell me your thoughts because so, that one is difficult. It when is. you say, I'm sorry, when you say okay. everything needs to be re-entered, mm -hmm. are you just talking about the prior written notice? Mm -hmm. You're talking, talking about, about the IEP, the entire IEP, even even though there's new, like, so say you put updated information about how they're doing in school and or you know their goals, everything, all of that. No, so that off? states. Okay. So if we if we have agreed um, through the services, they need speech, OT, all the related services, and our only discussion is we're pending um, more data to support going to an AU satellite classroom, leaving your homeschool, or staying in your inclusion setting, or resource setting, or low incident setting. Okay. So everything that we've agreed upon will be finalized in that IEP on the least restrictive environment where we're saying that they will or will go to another setting or will not. Then from the old IEP, everything will need to be re-inputted. So if we've already planned that they're staying at our school, and typically we have all that outlined, we have the draft of the IEP, then we're okay. We would just update the dates? Would we? Yes, when you meet again. Yeah, so the last day you meet, that will be the date of your annual IEP. So does that make sense? That makes it a little bit hairy having um, tabling IEPs. I think I got lost with kids that you know, placement or services. So let's say that's not a, a, a disagreement for about the placement, but um, the services. Like something I hear from parents lots is uh, the speech and language services. They feel like they should have more. You know, okay. they, should, they should have more time. So that's the point of the disagreement and the IP has to be tabled then from the service page on is is stay put and everything's inputted from the old IP from, that, from yeah. what you are not agreeing yeah. apart. But with, with, with that one, if if they're wanting more speech services, right. what data do we have to support exactly. it? Do we exactly. have to reject that because parent doesn't agree? No. District can propose, we can accept those services with data to support it, and then we can note that parent disagrees with the service time, okay. and we don't need to table the IEP. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes. if at all possible, okay. um, if you are in the middle of a meeting and we are not there and you need to call us, call, call us. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Amendments, when can we have amendments? Three instances. What are they? Transportation. Up service level, change service. Oh, that's important. Transportation, clerical error, and testing accommodations. Those are the only three times we can have amendments. If anything changes in your present levels of performance, if anything changes in your goals, and if anything changes in your services, basically if anything changes throughout the IEP, you have to have an annual IEP. Okay? So when you have an amendment, you want to clarify that it's the amendment of 5-4-2017. The district proposes to amend the IEP dated for 11 2017 to add transportation services for 2016-17 extended school year. We're going to accept that. During the school year, Johnny does not require transportation. However, due to the ESY location, transportation is required for Johnny to access the ESY program. Okay, so we are stating why the transportation is necessary. And then you're going to write under that Amendment 5-4-2017 because we want to be clear that this and this are part of the amendment only. The district proposes the remainder of the proposed items below continue with the current IEP of prior written notice dated 4-11-2017. We agreed. 
The team agrees that the IEP and prior written notice dated 4-11-2017 are current and continue to support Johnny's individualized educational program. Okay? So what do you think now goes below? prior written notice, everything that was accepted can now go, because we, underneath here, remember, what is a prior written notice? It's a summary of the IEP. Is this a summary of the entire IEP? No, this is a summary of the amendment. Now we need the remainder of the IEP. Be sure that when they are copied over, they are verbatim. I have been in instances where they, um, the teacher, the case manager, accidentally put accepted instead of the reject, so we had to go back and amend the amended. <laughs> it's a pain. It really is. Just be sure that they are copied verbatim. Okay? Deanna, did you say that they're known as adding or removing accommodations? Yes, you can do either. Okay. Yes. So, again, what are the three times you can have an amendment? Okay, professional judgment. Um, this is very important. We can we all don't agree all the time, and that's okay. Okay, we are always doing what's in the best interest for the student. Um, if you are coming up on a difficult meeting, please have an IEP prep meeting. Okay, that's like a staff meeting. An IEP prep meeting allows us all to come together. We're not making decisions. We're looking at the data, and we're reflecting on that data. Okay? You can have disagreements during this time, but when you are in the actual IEP and you are meeting with parents, it's very important for us to be on the same page. Okay? Use date, current data to support. Um, we cannot say stuff, I feel, or student uh, requires 30 minutes of speech therapy a week. I feel that the student would benefit from speech therapy. Use the data, okay? So we're gonna do a little activity. Let's see how much time we, we have a little bit. Um, instead of me writing prior written notices, I've written hundreds of them. Um, you guys have sat in probably hundreds of them. Um, we don't need to do that. What I'm going to do is pull up the prior written notices, some of them, from the district. Uh, let's see if it pulls it up. It wasn't doing it earlier. And I want you guys to help me expand on the proposals. Tell me yay or nay. Um, the following data were reviewed. 
teacher input. That's all that was reviewed, okay? <coughs> the correct speech service minutes were inputted in the IEP, except the correct speech service minutes were implemented attached to so-and-so's IEP. <laughs> I see your face. What's wrong with that? There's no data. data. There's no data. The reason for acceptance doesn't cite any specific data either. It should it not be a copy and paste. Yeah. Yeah. I was a little scared because Glenda was in the last session and she saw that one. Yeah. <laughs> she just followed her. Well, it's data. Data. For there the is. The department to use, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. And if this is a summary of the IEP meeting. That means we need work. What other services? What eligibility? Are they even eligible? Let me see. Are they even eligible for speech? I, we don't know. <laughs> We're assuming, but would that hold up in a court of law? No. No. Oh, I'm trying to go forward. Other relevant information is at the bottom right here. Okay? I tried to take names off, and this was my copier at home last night, sorry. But sometimes that's what we feel like when we're writing prior written notices, right? Okay, let's look at this one. First, we're talking about eligibility. That's great. Look at right here, the following data were reviewed. There is absolutely no eligibility paperwork that were reviewed right here at all. I'm sure we reviewed it, we just didn't capture it, okay? The team proposes that so-and-so should continue special education services with a primary eligibility of other health impairment. Okay, are we good with that one? Okay, we're good with that one. We're accepting it. The multidisciplinary evaluation report stated 11-17-2014 indicated um, so-and-so meets eligibility criteria of other health impairment and benefits from special education services in order to address deficits as outlined in the evaluations. How's that? Perfect. Services. Um, the team, can you guys read that? Okay, the team proposes for so-and-so to receive C-level extensive special education support for reading, writing, and math in a combination of the general education and special education setting under the exceptionality of other health impairment. How do you guys feel about that one? I have a question on that one. Yes. From, from the high school level, like I get these IEPs and, I'm, and I have to read through them and determine where, what classes do I put the kid in. The inclusion is pulled out. Uh -huh. I mean, I would like to see it more specified on the prior written notice. This kid should receive yes. pull out services in math and language arts. I would Inclusion too. services and whatever. Yes. Because it makes it so much easier, doesn't it? Yeah, because what does what does what services mean in a high school setting? Yeah. You know. We don't know. So do you see how being specific on these really helps in in any situation? This student could move to Alaska for next school year. They can pick up the IEP. <clears throat> Okay, C level services. Well, we all kind of know what C level extensive services, but do we know what inclusion is, or do we know what pull out is, or uh, low incidence class, an autism specific classroom? So you're right, that really does help. Um, what else? Tell me, help me dissect it. Bring out your language arts background. Is it necessary to have OHI here again under the exceptionality of OHI? No, because it was listed in the eligibility. It was listed in eligibility. Although it's not necessary, that's something I wouldn't gripe about. Okay. Um, what about the reason? So and so qualifies for the, this support under the exceptionality of other health impairment. His deficits in reading, writing, and math make it difficult for him to achieve his goals and objectives without supplementary aids and extended services. So I have some questions on that one. What are your questions? What, 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 what is supplementary aids? It doesn't say anything about supplementary aids right here. It just says he's receiving extensive special education supports. What are extended services? Um, I don't know what extended means. Yeah. I don't know because I saw it on this teacher, a couple of her IEPs. It said extended services. This was extensive. I know she is 
um, ELL, an English language learner. I don't know if that had anything to do with it. I couldn't tell you. I didn't get a chance to ask. Um, so, so there's there's some things that could be tweaked. Um, let's see what else. Okay, occupational therapy. Oh, I like how it's written. Doesn't it just stick out? And we know that the student re receives or is exiting or something having to do with occupational therapy. The IEP team proposes that so and so continue to receive occupational services for um, something minutes per week. The student's name is. I whited them out. Yeah. So occupational therapy services are recommended to continue to assist so and so with his education. <coughs> Would that be a really strong reason, mediocre or poor? So we want to really know many of our students would benefit from additional services. I would benefit from OT at times. I would benefit from speech at times. I would really benefit from mental health at times, right? <laughs> What makes it dif different? Why would is it required for this student to benefit? Why is it? We don't know. That's what we need to get to. We need to know why his um, five motor skills. Um, he's not able to to um, you know uh, cut or write or be very specific. Okay. Look at this one, physical therapy. The IEP team proposes that so-and-so continue to receive physical therapy for 30 minutes per week. Oh, sorry. Student has made excellent strides in his gross motor skills and his ability to navigate around the school environment with increased independence. However, he would still benefit from physical therapy to increase his participation in recess and PE activities as well as continue working on higher level balance and coordination skills. Do you know why this student needs physical therapy? Yes. You know exactly why, right? Okay. Um, let's look at this one because this happens often. Extended school year. The team proposes that ESY, extended school year, services are not recommended at this time. We're going to accept that. There is insufficient data to support the regression in recruitment. You know what you have just done in this IEP? You have locked yourself into another IEP. You know why? If you come to an IEP and you write, we have insufficient data, what do you think you need to do? Yeah. You have more data. Sufficient data. Get sufficient data, right? So instead, how can we wordsmith this so we're not locking ourselves into another IEP? The data indicates that there has not been a regression of recruitment of skills over a set of time. Okay? The IEP team consider extended school year services. Period. That's it. We considered it. Are we accepting it or rejecting it? We can reject it. That's fine if we need to reject it. Why? During the, um, let me see, how do we wordsmith this one? The data shows that during the December 20th, 2016 to January 7th, 2017 holiday break, so and so did not exhibit severe regression warranting extended school year services. Severe is a key word in there because that's what ESY is for, students that exhibit severe regression. And then we had dates in there, okay? We had actual dates, actual data that we can use to prove that they don't need ESY. A lot of times you have parents requesting ESY because it's a place for their child to go for 12 days in the summer. If we don't have data to support they need it, then we reject it, okay? Um, and then right here, a parent has received information concerning annual Medicaid consent. So that's a great place to put that under other relevant information. Okay, let's look at this one. What is the first thing, uh, what is the reason why we are in an IEP meeting? A student is in need of special ed services. They are eligible for special ed services. So 
the first thing we typically talk about is going to be eligibility, not physical therapy. Mm -hmm. Okay, we want to know why we are here at this meeting. Okay, the first thing here is physical therapy, but look up here, the following data were reviewed. Do we have any physical therapy data that was reviewed? So do you see how important it is to be sure that one area is in sync with another area? We are talking about this because we looked at that data and we analyzed that data, okay? So physical therapy. The IEP team proposes that uh, so-and-so be discharged from PT at this time. Are we good with that? No, why? why? Well, the, the why can be over here. Are we good with the proposal? Yeah. Um, the only thing I would do after physical therapy up here, I would put PT in parentheses, and then you can use PT throughout this. Okay. Um, based on his current evaluation of gross motor skills, so and so is very functional in the school environment and has gained maximum benefit from physical therapy services. Are we good with that? We have current evaluation. Um, PT is gross motor skills. They're now very functional. I just wonder when the third um, Yeah, it would be nice to have a date, huh? Or what else? Order, but it looks How can we exit a student from SPED or from a service when they meet their goals? goals? Do we know if they met their PT goals? They're very functional. That's great. Yeah, according to, yeah. List. Uh -huh. goals or make reference to the goals. According to evaluation data, da da da, and the student has um, met all of his physical therapy goals. Okay. Um, let's see, what else? The team proposes to continue adaptive PE services in the areas of locomotor movement and object control services. What do you guys think? Yeah. If you're doing, you have physical therapy, OT, SLP, ESY, I would probably just put adaptive PE up there just to keep it consistent. We're accepting based on formal testing 1815, that's great, they have the date, and the present levels of performance. I like that because we are relating it directly to the present levels of performance. So and so continues to qualify for adaptive PE services. Let's see what else they have here. Oh, here's another ESY. And these were different teachers, but look, they say the same. The team proposes extended school year services are not recommended at that time. There is insufficient data to support the regression recoupment. Okay, so one more time, help me wordsmith that. Because I want you guys, when you are in these IEP meetings, you're the LEA rep. Okay, if anything does go to litigation, you guys will be called in as well, not just the case manager or whoever's writing this. We will all be in it together. Could you, something like the student? Based on his current IEP goals or, or based on data um, from his goals, there is insufficient evidence that the student it meets. Uh, or, yes, or there is not a need right. instead of insufficient? Mm -hmm. yeah, There's not a need at this time for, for ESY. That's a good ESY. point because if you put insufficient, then you better get sufficient data. Mm -hmm. right. The data shows there is not, what kind of regression? Severe. severe. <laughs> ESY is for students that exhibit severe regression. Okay? And I can send these to you guys when we send the, um, the PowerPoints. And then here it is again in this one. Maybe this was the same teacher. Services, C-level extensive special education support for reading, writing, and math in combination of the general ed and special education settings. 
Does that help for middle and high school in combination of general and general and special ed education settings? Kinda, not really. Yeah, it is. When you, huh? What is What's the combination? The combination? Yeah, is it ninety percent in special ed and ten percent general ed? Is it what? What does it look like? Is it inclusion? A teacher is in there ninety percent of the time, and um, not ten percent of the time. What? What is that? Okay. So and so qualifies for this support under the exceptionality of speech and language impairment. His deficits in reading, writing, and math make it difficult for him to achieve his goals and objectives without supplementary aids and extended services. Again, what are supplementary aids and what are extended services? Um, there's another one. So I would really encourage you, go back and try just pull a handful of prior written notices. Go back and look on Synergy and, and words mentioned. Okay. Um, you'll either be pleasantly surprised or not. Okay. You know what, I like this one. The following data re were reviewed. We should always have the previous IEP is being reviewed. Because don't we review if they've met their goals or not? Don't we review if their service minutes need to continue or be increased or decreased? We should be reviewing that every year. Every year we should be reviewing how to lessen the student services because our ultimate goal is to exit all our students from special ed. Okay. Um, the IEP individual education and it's, is it plan or program? Individualized, individual education program. That's changed too. Yeah. It's, I don't know. I just go with the flow. It is a program though. Um, team proposes that so and so continue to qualify for special education services under the exceptionality of speech and language impairment in the area of language. The IEP team agreed that based on the most current evaluation and record, so-and-so qualifies under this exceptionality. What do you think? I wonder how many exceptionalities a student has. One, two, three. So what word could they add in here? Primary. We want to know that this is a primary reason that we're here at this meeting. Okay. What could be added in this one? Specific dates. Uh, the specific date of the current evaluation. Okay. And if there's evaluation and they qualify, the student is going to have pretty good discrepancies or deficits in that area, right? So in order to address the deficits, that's why we're here. Okay. If no one had deficits, we wouldn't have special education. Uh, regular education classroom continued. Oh, I want to bring this up. On a lot of them, I'll see a number here. Two, three, four, and it's literally the hashtag and then the number three. Do you know why that is? If you've written the IEPs and the prior written notices, you'll see it often. So they automatically come up. And I actually have a sample. I just don't know if we'll have time to go through it. It automatically comes up as part of the option. My alarm is going to go off. Um, please tell your teachers to take that off. You don't need to see a number four right here, and it's a second proposal. Okay, and that's just, I haven't been diagnosed OCD, but. Um, <laughs> so, regular education classroom combined with special education classroom and services provided specified as. So-and-so is considered a C-level student receiving special education services for reading, written language, and math, which is extensive less than 40% of the day in the regular class setting. What do you think on that one? Was it just me? I was a little confused on that one. Were you guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. It, it should not be a guessing game. 
Okay, when I get this, I should know exactly what I need to do for the student. Okay. Uh, the IP team agreed that this is the most appropriate level of special education support to meet so-and-so's needs and allow her to be successful in the general education setting. I still don't know what the most appropriate... I know the most appropriate level. She's a C level. Uh, um, extensive level. But I don't know the services. Oh, but look at down here. But we shouldn't have to guess like this. The IEP team proposes that so-and-so receive special education services for written language for 100 minutes, math for 400 minutes, and reading for 400 minutes on a weekly basis in the resource classroom. That's better because it's specifying in a resource classroom and it's specifying the amount of time. It just got a little confusing from, from this one. We could have wordsmithed that better. Okay. Um, but the IEP team agrees that this level of special education instruction is most appropriately met so-and-so's academic needs and allow her to succeed in the general education classroom. So this one's saying in the general education classroom, but here we're saying we're pulling her out the resource room. Okay. I just pulled these last night. I just went and I hit the arrow button and was pulling them. So unfortunately, I didn't have a problem finding his prior written notices to edit. Um, oh, other relevant information. So we had a parent, she was adamant that she wanted her child on grade level, okay? Child was in second grade. So under other relevant information, we specifically wrote, parent um, wants student to be at grade level. And in elementary, it's easy because we can do DRA. She wanted him at um, level 18 DRA, and then I put out what it was, what DRA was, and what level 18 meant, okay? Um, by the end of the second grade year. By the end of this third grade year, parent would like student to be at and whatever end of third grade should be, okay? So we put that because the student was at kinder level. They were at level four in the DRA. It was not a reasonable, and at this time, it wasn't reasonable or attainable. Maybe later on it will be, but the student's primary um, eligibility is autism. So right now we really needed to focus on the student social, on the student's um, and his interactions, and being able to express himself. There was no way, we had to work on that social aspect first. There's no way we could do um, academic, grade level academic work at this time. Okay, so it's okay to put what the parent wants. Dennis forgot to ring the bell. So it is 11.15. If you would like to continue reviewing, I will be here. But thank you guys. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call your coordinator. You can call myself. Um, have a wonderful lunch. Have a wonderful rest of the day. And an even better summer. Thank you. Thank you.